Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no way. No way that I couldn't be an illegal immigrant. You know what? Hopefully, Lee has friends in my place in that. Yeah, well, that I spoke with Lee about that, and he told me that he would have lawyers and he would have a lawyer. Not a Who knows the ways and the. Shortcuts and the yeah, yeah. The people who just sign up and yeah, yeah. like yeah. 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 have a meal together yeah. too. And they'll pay for it? Oh, yeah, he will. Uh, uh, you know, he will pay. Yeah. How much he will pay, we don't know. Uh, but I will explain you how we are going to be. It's just a matter of dealing. And even when Dealing with him. Oh, oh, well, you said that too. Very much like I understand. I know what you mean. But behind, behind, yeah, behind, you have a sword. H1. So we can go fast, right? But you've got the sword there. Oh, after space.
So we are going to continue where we left it with the satsang of Guru Raj. We have the compliment of Jeff, which basically gives you the Buddhist interpretation of the same teachings. You know, as Jeff said, you know, one of the things that the teachings of Guru Raj has is that he really brings the essence of all spiritual teachings. That's why, you know, a Buddhist listens to Guru Raj and says, ah, that's okay. And a Christian listens to him and same and, you know, what he is. So, um, we are going to continue with this satsang of Is Life Problematic? That I started, I put it a little bit backwards so that we, you know, rewind a little bit. And I will stop it from time to time. to stay away over the elephant. Is it a power which is beyond yourself or is it a power that is within yourself? Hmm? That power is within yourself functioning all the time through the super conscious level of your mind. You remember uh, last week when I explained you a little bit about the mind and the superconscious, the collective subconscious. Mm -hmm. Now this pure consciousness, as many traditions in the East call it, is the one that makes the decisions for you. So when you make a mistake, it's divinity itself saying, let us make this mistake so that we can continue learning. So the power that makes the decision is within you and is this superconscious mind, but it's not like your little self. It's not the little I that you identify with that makes the decision. It's a superconscious supraconscious mind that makes the final decision of what's gonna of what what the system is gonna do. All the time. And you are just being deluded by yourself, for yourself, that I am functioning with free will. Because bondage thinks it is free. Bondage, 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 bondage thinks it is free. Now, what does this mean is what? You know, the other day we were speaking about 
you were supporting the Yankees, it was? Yeah. <laughs> Who was the supporter of the Yankees? <laughs> <laughs> so, <clears throat> when you support the Yankees, which is just a conditioning in your mind that comes since you are a little boy, you say, I am from the Yankees. You think you are free of the Yankees, but you are not. You are not free of the Yankees. So, the conditioned mind thinks it is free, mm -hmm. but it is not. You know, like, I am a Trump supporter, mm -hmm. and you think you are free being a Trump supporter. No, you are just conditioned to be a Trump supporter, or a Yankee supporter, or you name it, supporter. Mm -hmm. And conditioning thinks it is free, but it is not. And you are not free because you will not get happy if the Patriots <laughs> score. <laughs> And? Because doesn't our, um, doesn't this like con uh, conditioning come from the sub subconscious mind? Yeah, well, those conditionings, yeah, come from how your... Uh, and that's the small eye. Yeah, right? How the, 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 the ego mind has been conditioned. Right. You know, it, <clears throat> there is nothing in you which is free. Mm -hmm. No molecule in your body right. can move freely. It can only move according to the laws that govern its movement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No molecule. So if all the molecules move according laws that determine its movement, where's your freedom? Where's your freedom? Your freedom is not there because you're not the body, you're not the mind, you're not the emotions. So the question is, who are you? Okay. And that, you know, Jeff introduced is the ultimate uh, Buddhist tradition, right. the right. Dzogchen, Dzogchen, Dzogchen tradition, Dzogchen. which, you know, which goes to the, the ultimate, uh, you know, the, the ultimate meditation, which is, then who is this I? Mm -hmm. that I am. Mm -hmm. When bondage thinks that it is free, who is the thinker? Someone that is bound. So how can you even think that you are free? So what is the because story? who is the thinker of I support the Yankees? The thinker of I support the Yankees is a conditioned mind. So, mm -hmm. so uh, you know, it's, so how can you ever think that you are free? You know, mm -hmm. If it is, the thinker is, is the conditioned mind. When someone does <laughs> and we say life is continuous, the continuity person is a person in movie making yeah. that follows up every sequence. Now I've got to get back to the exact expression I had on my face when I said the last sentence. <laughs> There's no problem, life is no problem at all. We think it is problematic, but life is not problematic and it only can become problematic if we think it is problematic. In other words, it's not what it happens, it's what you think about what happens. And what, what right have you got to say life is problematic? Who is judging life's problems? Hmm? You are judging life's problems. And when you say, I am judging life's problems, which, which part of me is doing the judgment. Hmm? The higher level of your mind? No. Because at that super conscious level there's no problem. Hmm? It is the conscious level of your little mind and even Einstein could only use 8% 
of the mind. I think it was a bit less. People like to exaggerate. Huh? Only that little percentage is analyzing your entire lifestyle, bringing in the discrimination between a life of divinity and a life of humanity, and then because of this very dualistic approach, one finds problems. So what do we do to get rid of problems? We go to the approach, we go to a monistic approach. That I and my father are one. In practical terms, this means live in the presence of God all the time. Right. Mm -hmm. And instead of thinking, I am separate from what is happening, think, I am one with what is happening, which mm -hmm. is the same thing as saying, I am one with, with my father, and that is the monistic approach. We use that approach in every situation and what will result by using that approach in any given situation would be this, that I am not the doer, he is the doer. Which is an important to realize thing because we think we are the doers. But what are we really doing? I mean, the mind is conditioned and works in a conditioned way. The breathing works by itself, the heart beats, and this, that, the other. So, what are you doing in reality? In reality, you are only the observer. And that consciousness that is observing is also the doer. But you are not the doer, and it's important that you get to this point where you realize that everything happens by itself in reality. Mm -hmm. And you learn to flow spontaneously in what is going on, and what is going on is the expression of divinity. And that has to do with the Vajra Jnana tradition, which is, you know, associated to Tantra, Jeff said that Guruji didn't uh, speak about Tantra, but in fact all his techniques belong to the Tantric tradition, including the chant, the green cream, or the individual mantra, that uh, the, 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 the tradition of the individual mantras come from things like the Mahanirvana Tantra, which is a classical uh, about mantras and many other classical books of ancient Hindu philosophy, uh, which belong to the Tantric tradition. And if, he's, and if he is the doer, who the hell am I to complain about it? Because your very complaint is the problem. A very important idea. Because what if you didn't complain, complaint. what is the problem? Uh. The problem is that you complain about what's going on, not what's going on. Because if you didn't complain, then what's the problem? If you had no complaint, there would be no problem. So, we give it all to the divine will. Which means, you know, Surrender. let be, mm -hmm. let be, give it all to that divine will, let be. You know, you are not going to, you cannot destroy your samskaras, you cannot destroy your patterns, you can transcend them. So you just give it all to that divine will, which is similar to this thing that Jeff was speaking about, you know, of these monastic traditions that, you know, you give up your family, you give up your this, you give up, you go to a, you, you go away to, ne, to a, some forest and, as Guruji would say, and escape from yourself. Giving things away 
doesn't really mean that you know uh, giving things away means that you become non attached to those things. Give away means that you are not thinking in order for me to be okay I need to achieve X and it doesn't matter if X is a house or X is enlightenment or X is nirvana or X is whatever where you want to put the X I always tell people if you want to put an X put a concrete X so that you know what you are yearning for like a house <laughs> you know where you are going but to put, you know, your yearning in something that you don't even know, it makes absolutely no sense. And, as the <coughs> Jeff said, you know, there is the direct path, which is, you must realize that that supraconscious mind is already within you. You are already divine. You just need, you just think you are not. Like Thomas Keating said in, in the video I did put you, for those that you know that mm, the other and then then you find there is no other that you have always been one that you old chap are the doer and don't you damn well blame me because you control every movement of mine because without you and your energy I cannot even lift up a hand So, that will bring us to acceptance of the situation we are placed in. One of the things we teach, in order to deal with your day, the first thing you have to do is accept the circumstances of, those day, of that day as they come. You accept them fully, you know, with an e equanimity, which means whatever it is, I like it the same. I did tell you about the brown angels and the black angels, yeah, yes. I told that story yeah. already. So, which means that, you know, if it, some days are rougher than others, like, like the sea, that sometimes is mm -hmm. rough and sometimes is calm. Mm -hmm. So. But you accept them both and you deal with them both and you enjoy the experience <coughs> of both things, you know, heat and cold, and success and failure, and uh, critics and praise, you know. When we accept the situation we are placed in, automatically we are surrendering we are surrendering not only ourselves but also surrendering what the mind thought was a problem it is very important what the mind thought was the problem when you surrender to circumstances when you accept your circumstances, naturally you will surrender to circumstances. And when you surrender to the circumstances that you are in, you also surrender the idea, the thought you have about those circumstances. You, you, you give it away. That is the true giving away. Mm -hmm. You give away that thought that you have about your circumstances and just leave your circumstances and you naturally get devoted to your circumstances and you surrender the idea, the opinion. One of the things that really separate us is our opinions. When we have too many opinions <laughs> about things, right. we separate ourselves. So you surrender all your opinions about the situation and you stop having opinions and you just Exercise your abilities, the abilities you have that day, which is the result of your evolution, not only of every day since this lifetime, but from every lifetime before. And, you know, those abilities, you have them, 
you surrender your opinions, you surrender to your circumstances, and you just pack. That's all you need to do. At the end of the day, realize that this is only experience. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, and the experience, people try to preserve themselves, and it's a, it's a loss. It's a lost mm -hmm. battle. You are going to finish in a little hole of eight foot by eight feet by four feet, or yeah. you know, you <laughs> have it lost already. Mm -hmm. So you have nothing to lose. <laughs> <laughs> and once you surrender the problem, how can there be any problem left? You've thrown it out of the window. So, I am not the doer, he is the doer. Because he is the doer, I accept the circumstance I am in. Because I accept the circumstance that I am in, I surrender myself to the circumstance. Hmm? You don't need to surrender yourself to God if you don't believe in one. Just surrender yourself to the circumstance. Hmm? So, acceptance and surrender go hand in hand. And when they go walk hand in hand, there comes about a sacrifice. Not a sacrifice of your individuality but the sacrifice of the sense of individuality. Oh, Which is very yeah. important yeah. idea. Yeah. You don't sacrifice your individuality because your individuality with whichever abilities has arrived to that day, has surrendered to the circumstances and is just acting there. Mm -hmm. You surrender your sense of being an individual. You surrender that. You surrender the sense, the idea you have about you, your opinions, all those, all, all that that wakes up in the morning and you say without saying, I am this. No, you are not this. If you, you know, at 14, when you were 14, another thing woke up and you said, I am this. But where is that this? This disappeared completely. So, <clears throat> you surrender your sense of being an individual, and then your individuality is what is left, your true individuality. And the sense of individuality in this instance would mean that divine life and human life has merged into one. Now when divine life and human life merges into oneness, what can exist? Without sacrificing individuality, what can exist is you, the real you, in which divinity is merged. Hmm? You don't go and merge into divinity. You wouldn't know where to find him in the first place. But create the circumstance where he merges into you. And that's why I've said so many, many times over and over again, take one step towards God and he takes ten steps towards you. He is the one is, that is forever seeking you and you bluff yourself by saying I am seeking God. You're not. You can only water the plant but you cannot make the plant grow. So you do your bit. Water the garden, that's all. And leave it all to divine will. Hmm? With 
what do you want as a garden of life? Hmm? It's very little, really. It's very little. You don't need a whole ocean to water that little garden patch which you call your little life. A hmm? couple of buckets of love. That's all. That's all. Love filled with sincerity. Love filled with honesty. The feeling when you look into your beloved's eyes, you melt away. And you really feel that deep love. And this very feeling has nothing to do with emotionalism. This feeling must become yourself, the totality of yourself, which does not create a feeling, but you become the feeling. Which means that um, our feelings are created because they are created <coughs> our emotions. You know, we are not speaking about emotionalism here. Our emotions are created through the energy of life. You know, that white light going through the prism of the mind. And then you get all this, and then I have an emotion, or I love. Guruji used to say, in the very moment you say, I love so-and-so, you stop loving so-and-so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In the moment you make, it's I and my feeling like a created feeling. You become that feeling. You are that feeling. You, you are love. And that is the, the, what you want to do. You just want to become love, which is the same thing as saying you want to become God, which is the same thing as saying you are already God. So don't need to worry too much about it. I just, Ramon, it's just, you know, I'm just wondering if communism, people who live in communism society where it's more, you know, community sense versus, I mean, our whole existence of our raising was individualistic, our whole verbiage of our language was, to, to, you know, I think this is where people struggle, it's really taking away on just so many levels. I wouldn't like to live in a communist country. <laughs> no, but no, I'm saying, I'm wondering if they have more acceptance. No, of, no, they have no, no choice. No, they have no choice. Exactly. But it's like a it's different kind of... Absolutely the same. You know, for example, Eastern civilizations like the Japanese or the Chinese are more, mm, you know, community-oriented. Right. You know, they go all together and oh. this, that, that. Other societies, like Western societies, are more individualistic. Right. But that's the yin yang. I mean, it's not that one is good. No, I'm not one saying is bad. that. I'm just wondering if they're in your just experience, if they just have a different philosophy and more. No, not really. At the end of the day, you know, because of their everybody has a little eye. The patterns might be different. So the patterns of a woman in Saudi Arabia with respect to men will be different to the patterns than a woman in America with respect to men and so on and so forth. You right. know, wherever you go, you, you will have different patterns, but patterns are patterns mm -hmm. and condition you in one way or another, but they condition you. Right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, whatever they are, it's not important. And, Remember, you know, the, the thing of the good and the bad, we call it good and bad, but in reality it's kind of yin and yang, it's mm -hmm. positive and negative, mm -hmm. you know, it's right. not that the lions are bad, you know, right. because Republicans will say that Democrats are bad, and Democrats will say that Republicans are bad, so right. who of the two is right, you know, Democrats. nobody is neither good <laughs> nor bad, really, right. it just, you know, it's the opposing forces that create the movement, Right. which is manifestation and it's you know both are needed right. you need you say oh we have good weather but could we live only with good weather sure no, no. <laughs> we couldn't there would be no rain and then 
how would things grow? We couldn't, you need both. So it's not that one is good and one is bad, like, it's like one is positive and one is negative, and you need both in your life. So you need both critics and praise, failure and success, you need both, day and night, so on and so forth. What do you feel? You feel that? Hmm? And it's so easy. Hmm? That is why true spiritual masters are there. Hmm? Their buckets, which they give you, have holes that are plugged. And they say, Fill the bucket, and after you fill the bucket, just take out those few corks or whatever you call it in this country, those plugs, that's all. And you just walk around the garden, holding the bucket in your hand, huh? and it becomes lighter and lighter, no weight is felt huh? as it becomes lighter, huh? and your garden is watered. So what does this mean? Does this mean you do not force yourself to love, but love becomes life itself. Love can never be forced. That is presumptuous. It just flows by itself. Just unplug. And let the water pour out and you just walk around admiring the flowers of life and when you really learn to admire the flowers of life then you will find that there is no difference between the divine life and this life hmm. and admiring the flowers of life is you know you start with a good morning practice but you do that and you know, you, you do the practices with your actions and then you do your practices with your thoughts and you, you know, you do your practices with your feelings and, and which is basically your practices tending to open your heart like service. I spoke to you about servicing others in the life. And you do that and you, you simply prepare, make the circumstances so that he emerges, merges in you, like it was said before. So you just, you know, it's a feminine uh, position. You prepare the garden. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a feminine position. Yeah. You prepare the garden and then you let that he emerges into your garden. poems, he speaks about himself as the wife, so he puts himself in a feminine position, which is kind of a very passive position, which is what you do when you meditate, you put yourself in a completely passive position, and you just accept everything that comes, you know, you are just the observer, you are not the doer, you know, that would be kind of the positive or active, or, you know, you this positive negative which is a way of speaking and when you find that you will say to yourself that I exist hmm? I would challenge Descartes anytime when he said uh, um, I think, therefore, I exist. No, that is totally wrong. I exist, and therefore, I think. And most of the time, I'm thinking rubbish. <laughs> Just watch them. 
you know, how many wise thoughts or creative thoughts or original thoughts you have in one day. <laughs> the rest is rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> I am thinking rubbish 99.9% .9 of the time because I'm separating myself from my father where there's no separation at all. Hmm? I come from his sperm and I'm still part and parcel of the same sperm. I'm not separate from my father. So, when we start thinking, and that is the tool we have, uh, apart from other tools that do other things that require no thinking, but with the thinking tool we have, uh, we can... Go Why are you smiling? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but that thinking tool we have, we can use it usefully. Hmm? So, instead of thinking that I am uh, apart from divinity, use the same thought to say that I am one with divinity. No extra energy is required. So it's just a matter of changing your thought. Instead of thinking every time you act and you live and you exist that I am apart from the divine, which you do because it's in your system, with the same energy that you say I am apart, you can say I am one with divinity and do that in every situation and it works. Every thought will unpattern all the previous patternings in your mind. When you feel with that deep intensity and become that feeling yourself that I and my father are one you will view life from an entirely different perspective. The first things that will happen is this, that you will rid yourself of anxiety. You will rid yourself of insecurity. You will rid yourself of a feeling of inadequacy. And the greatest thing that you will gain is a total, natural, spontaneous flow. You just need an F to change that low into flow. Just an F. F, 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 F. F. It's all you need. So stop this nonsense fooling around with other kinds of F's and buggering up the mind. Add the F to the low and flow. You don't even need to grow. You're fully developed inside you as you are. You just need to unfold. And unfolding means be naked. Which is what we do, you know, when you do the good morning day and you put yourself in the presence of God. At the end of the day, what you are learning is to put yourself naked in front of God or of life or however you want to call it which means you are innocent, you just, you, you know, you, you have nothing to hide, you, you are naked. Throw away all the fancy trappings of the mind, 
and be in the presence of the Father. Totally naked. In other words, it means that you have nothing to hide. Hmm? Every part of you is divine. Hmm? And to approach divinity when you are still in a dualistic frame of mind, it will make it much easier for you hmm? to know that I am naked but not inhabited hmm? and in all my nakedness which means sincerity and honesty I am in the presence of my Father. I am naked by, but not inhibited means that there is nothing in you that in the presence of God would be but so you are naked but not inhibited, which means, you know, if you are how you are, you are how you are. You don't need to inhibit it. You just be naked with whatever it is. It's beautiful to be naked, really. There was a, a nudist party and the editor of uh, the local newspaper got an invitation uh, to send, to become himself or send a reporter to the party. We were having an annual dinner. Mm -hmm. So the editor thought, <coughs> pardon, <coughs> the editor thought this could make a good story perhaps. So he sent send a cub reporter. Let's just go and see what all this is about. So next morning when the cub reporter walked in, uh, the editor asked, how was it? So he says, oh, boss, it was exciting. <laughs> it's nice. Everyone there was naked. Hmm? He says, even the butler was naked. Hmm? So the editor asked, how did you know it was the butler? Because the only way you can know if it's a butler or not, is because the way he dresses. And, you know, uh, from the butler's you know, clothes, you could say, this is a butler. So he says, well, one thing is for sure, I knew, definitely, it was not the maid. <laughs> you say, this reporter was flowing quite well. <laughs> uh, <dear me. laughs> Good. And so, there is no difference between human life and a godly life. Invite him into your human life and you see immediately your life will be transformed. Your life would be transformed so much that you would even forget human life. That every breath you take, I talk from personal experience, that every breath you take, you feel as if that you lose the consciousness that you are breathing. You lose the consciousness that you are breathing because a higher consciousness exists and that very breath, every breath seems to you as if he is breathing and that is self-realization. That is finding your self, that is man know thyself and that is the answer to the world's greatest question, who am I? And this question can never be answered with rationalization. So questions, if you have any, and then we will stop for a coffee. And then the last part of today will be the ashram and the organizing.
Question? Sometimes when I think about <clears throat> being in that state of divinity, when I just act, when I just go through my day, I try not to get upset, I try not to prepare. Yeah, but never try. try. No, no, you cannot right. try. You right. stop no. trying. So I'm open to each moment, event. When I have this feeling that, like, uh, I don't want to use the term I am divine because I don't feel that. But when I feel like it's a higher energy coming through me, that I'm not going to get in the way of what it's going to produce, I feel like this other inner mind says, like, well, who do you think you are? Mm -hmm. It's like mm -hmm. the patterning of us being separate. Yeah, the well, that, that's of us exactly. Being that's, is so strong that I yeah, almost feel like it's right. egotistical to think. Yeah, that. that's yeah, the patterning right. is very strong, and thus, you know, like Jeff is spoken, he said some, you know, in, from the Buddhist perspective, the the eightfold path, you mm -hmm. know, which you know I spoke to you about it also, but all all traditions, you know, deal with the same things. At the end of the day, what you apply yourself is a discipline to transcend those patterns. Mm -hmm. And you start in the morning when you wake up becoming aware of your idea of yourself mm -hmm. and realizing that that idea of yourself it's only yours to begin with and nobody cares right. mm -hmm. and nobody knows right. so the only thing you have is a day to live and then you start putting your attention in the day you have to live and once you start putting your attention in the day you have to live you start learning how to flow in that day and little by little you get devoted to all the things that may happen in one day. And it comes to a point that you start enjoying every day. Every day is good enough for you to live. This day is good enough for me to live. And, and then, you know, you little by little lose the sense of being that I that wakes up in the morning, that you identify with. You start, stop, I then you surrender that sense of being an I, and you are yourself because you know you you will act as your individuality is, but just flowing, just knowing that you are not the doer, that someone else is doing the rest. You are just, you know, it's like you are just interpreting uh, the paper of a play, you know, the character of a play. And you just indulge in interpreting that character fully, and that's all. And then you, you flow. More questions? No more questions? Copy time. <laughs>